God is not there. <laughs> She's missing that guy. She wasn't looking. Hello. We're going to wait a few minutes for more people to join before we get started. Sharon, we were just talking about you. <laughs> I missed you at coffee time, but glad you're here now. Hello. That's me cracking open my beer. Or Pellegrino. There it is. Oh, anytime. It breaks the monotony for me, so I'm pretty sure it's breaking the monotony for you guys, too, so. Hey guys, just waiting for some more people to join while I gather up some things. Got a little bit of everything going on, a basket of fun, a basket of fun. Asparagus on toast? That sounds really good, actually. I love asparagus. <laughs> I like to eat, so. I'll take that guy away. I was wearing him before, so he just came off. So, some of the leather that I plan to use. Hello. Are we doing anything on Saturday? Yes, we are going to be doing something on Saturday. I have not figured out what it's going to be yet. Um, I'll figure it out today. And I'll post it. So, just give me a little, little bit of time. I need some thread. I need to find my 1G. Hang on, be right back. My box of 1G. Can you guys see it? 
There we go. It's missing one. There's the one that was missing. <laughs> so, so since this is a design class, I don't specifically have a design that I was really working on. So I'm just kind of working on, um, I'm working on it as I go. I pulled this, um, but then of course the base of the gold cup chain is gold and it looks like I'm going for more of a silver look. So that'll probably be X'd out of the um, plant there. So let's see what we got going on here. Bring you guys in a little bit more. So let's talk about the different things that we can do or add to this. So um, I'm thinking I want some crystal to it because this is kind of like opalescent and shiny. So I'm gonna try to bring on the opalescence and shiny of it. So I pulled, I brought in some crystals. Um, these are all chatons, so 39 SS. So they're eight millimeter chatons. Um, so if anybody ever had a idea of what size a 39 SS is, that is exactly eight millimeter. For some reason they like to trick us and they like to change from ss to then millimeter afterwards so that way you know we don't know what we're buying i guess <laughs> but um so these we have settings for them which is great so i use the settings for amatrice the bracelet that i have as well um so you can sew through the settings because they have holes in the bottom you can see the holes there right there on that one so um but yeah so that's that's a good thing so that way you can tack it down to the piece without actually having to like bead embroidery like a traditional one like this so if you're joining us for the first time we did this last time last week and it's posted on facebook and it is posted on youtube as well so you guys can learn how to do that um i taught you a nifty trick on how to do the corners um and everything else so um so yeah, but now we're working on what else are we gonna put on there? So I kind of grabbed some light colors um, of things that I thought would work out with it. Um, we'll go from there. I'm just gonna kind of put things, put my, <laughs> put my thread back. So, and I brought these two, these are Nevettes. So I think a Nevette would be fun. A Nevette would be a fun shape to work with as well, so. Um, and the Nevettes actually have settings on them for t for them too. So, so these are 15 by seven is the size. So these will actually just sit right inside. So if you're not sure if you want to use them quite yet, you know, you got your settings and stuff like that, or if you have that at home, um, you can just pop them into the setting and then stick them on to whatever, like wherever you think you might want it at with the bead embroidery design. Um, and so that way there's like, there's no commitment to it. <laughs> really not committed to it because you didn't like put the setting in. I could like pop it back out right now. So, but yeah, so we're just gonna have a little bit of fun here and trying to figure out what we're gonna put there. So um, some other things that we can use for bead embroidery that would be fun to use um, that stitch well down is um, silver silk. So silver silk has, it's like a knitted uh, wire. It's got a ball chain inside of it. Um, and so you can stitch through it. I use it in a lot of different things. And I know a couple of other people that actually use it in a couple of different things too. So um, this is it in a necklace form. And you can see this is a beaded bead that I stitched it down into so that way it wouldn't move anymore because I didn't want it to move back and forth on there. Um, but yeah, so you can get the idea. So any cabs that look like that. I do have a cab that looks like that. I have one right here. So that's an oval shape, but I can get you a, um, uh, whatchamacallit, a teardrop shape as well. Because, you know, most people are gonna wanna do, <laughs> they're gonna wanna copy what I have on here. So, and I get it, I understand. I took the guesswork out of it, so. 
Oh, here we go, Lynn. If you want it, it's yours. I'll hold it aside for you. Um, so, and I have tiny Nivets too. Like these are baby ones. These are 10 by fives. So I think I like where those three ones are though. And I have another one here, just in case I decide I want something more. And let's see. I think we should bring back some color into it again on the base. So this is Moonlight. So it's kind of like a regular crystal. It's got a little bit more essence to it. Mine. Okay, I got you, Lynn. <laughs> um, this is Pacific Opal Glacier Blue. So it's got a glacier blue coating on top of the Pacific Opal coating. Um, so it gives a almost a yellow reflection to it. So I am probably going to X that one out. Although I love Pacific Opal. And it's probably not going to work for this unless I wanted to use gold. So this is going more silver this way. So um, this is regular Pacific Opal. So this is a possibility. Um, this is light turquoise, which I mean, hello. That's, that's pretty right there. Um, white patina. I love, 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 love white patina. It's one of my favorites. So it's, um, I actually do not like the rest of the patina colors. I only like white patina. So, <laughs> um, but you can get the idea why, because you know, hello, looks like diamonds. So, and then we have light azure. So, which is kind of like a light, light blue. Um, so based on what I got going on here, I think I'm going to go with turquoise light turquoise I think because that's gives more of a green cast to it a little light azure would be pretty hmm decisions decisions so this is kind of like how the design process happens when you're doing bead embroidery or something like that is you just kind of um, gather up some materials based on what you got going on here where is my settings they're my settings um and you kind of go with it so i know that's kind of not what people want to hear <laughs> i don't draw anything out there are some people that draw things out like they'll actually draw something on a piece of paper and stuff like that um i don't you know there's a term out there that's like, let the beads speak to you. Well, beads never talk to me. So um, if I like it, I'll be like, okay, it's pretty. I can, deal, I can deal with that. So this is the light azure, which does not, I mean, when you put it next to that, it does not like say, hi, I'm here. It's just shiny. Shiny's nice, don't get me wrong, but it's not like, you know, you gotta have me here. So, and then this is the turquoise. I'm thinking the turquoise is gonna win. It's gonna win. So, my plan is to do this, and then I should... Probably, I'm going to line around the outside coming from these crystals that are down here on the bottom with some cup chain around. Um, just so I can bring some of the crystals around, but it's not going to throw off the, um, uh, <laughs> it's not going to throw off the um, pear shape or the uh, teardrop shape that I have on here. So, because I want to keep that shape. Um, cause or else I wouldn't have used a teardrop shape piece. Um, so, um, and it is going to be a pendant. I know that much. So here's some of the cup chain. Cup chain is really nice because it can make a turn like that. Cause it's very, you know, it's got that motion in the ocean. So, so we still got the crystal going on there. We still got the shininess that will also cover up that outside edge. Um, of the um, 
the, uh, whatchamacallit there, oh lord, the Delicas. Um, so you can't see that gap there, if there's any gap from when we stitched the beads down. So I think that is our plan. That is my plan for right now. So I'm going to start by actually setting. So has anybody ever set any stones into a setting themselves? This is a poll. It's a question. So <laughs> you guys can type in the answer. <laughs> so there are very nifty tools for the round ones, which I will show you. Yes, all right, cool. Some of you guys have. All right, so these are called smart setters. So um, so I have one for 39SS, ta-da. So you see um, they have, if we flip this over, um, it's used for like that, uh, the Gia stuff, so those necklaces that are pre-made and you can set your own stones in them. Um, but you know, you could also use them for the loose settings too. So if you guys ever kind of like um, have to use that, that's great. So they have them in the 39 SS. I have one for a 14 millimeter Rivoli. Um, I have one for a 29 SS, which is a six millimeter. So, and we have one for the 12 millimeter Rivoli and it'll also work on a 12 millimeter square. So I love those square stones, by the way, they are awesome. Unfortunately, they do not have ones for navettes. So I will show you how to set a navette as well. See, you guys didn't think that this would be like a multi-learning class. Like we're gonna learn how to set stones too. So we're gonna start actually with the Nevets. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with just a pair of pliers. I'm gonna push this away because otherwise it's gonna to wanna to focus in on that. Hey, Jimmy. Yep, we have different size variety of setters and they are um, $12 a piece if anybody's interested. So, um, so what you do is you take um, your stone and your setting. You make sure it's set into the place that you want it to be. Like, you know, it's equally on all sides. It's, you know, set in there. You're going to take your thumb and you're going to put it in the middle of the crystal. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to place one end of your um, pliers. I use some flat nose pliers here. Um, and you're going to lay it against the back part of the stone. You're going to reach over to the top part where the tongue is, and you're just going to push that down. And then you're going to go to the other side, and you're going to do the same thing. Layer it, push it down. Okay, flip the stone. Lay it, push it down. Lay it against the side. Whoop, sorry. Push it down. All right, and then you're going to go back around all these again. How do you get one out? I need to use a setting on a different color stone. So to get one out, you see these pliers here? Oh, hang on. I got to plug in my phone because otherwise you guys will not see me in a little while. And then you'll be upset. Class will be over. <laughs> All right, so how you take it out is actually you use these type of pliers here, like these that are flat snows, but you see how they have a very fine tip edge and you can just grab the edge of your, oh, let's focus in there. 
you can grab the edge of your setting and just kind of pull it back gently being careful not to scratch the stone but you can see I just pulled that one back again so but they have to be the fine tip um, pliers like this because if you use the other ones um, it won't work and you can always also use that the magic dip stuff or whatever it's called um, to coat the edge of your pliers so if you're afraid of scratching or marring the crystal I don't um, I don't really you know typically use that I mean if anything you can use painters tape to the blue tape and cover it up um, but I'm typically only touching the bottom edge of the um, setting and the um, the actual prong I don't really touch the uh, crystal itself so all right so we're gonna set the rest of these And once you know how to do it, it goes really fast. See? Easy peasy. So some people, they take a little bit more time to decide what they want to do with their bead embroidery stuff. You know, like they can't, you know, it's like you have to dwell on it a little bit. And I understand that, you know, I'm just doing this for um, class purposes. But I'm, I actually thought about it a little bit more than just sitting here and putting some crystals onto a, a thing and saying, yeah, I'm cool with that. So um, I actually did think about it a little bit more. So... It's not like, you know, I'm like, whew, all right, that's cool. We're done. <laughs> um, I thought about that last night, like, what I was I going to do with it? So, yeah, that is true. So, you just kind of go around and you um, smush them down as close as you can get them. Um, these prongs are pretty good because they're not like the, so they're, all right. So, you see these prongs here, I'm going to get it as close as I can without it, um, like losing its focus um hello there we go all right but they're rounded they're rounded off so you try to get the ones that are rounded off like this because otherwise if they're squared off then they're going to catch a lot easier than if they're rounded off like these so so that i use the tool on that was quick and easy. I mean, like, woo, it happened quick. All right, so I will show you guys a tool. And I might have to take the mat away in just a moment because it probably will work better without a mat. Roll that, roll that dice, and you should see my work area. Oh, my God, it looked like who did it in Iran right now. All right, so for the, for the setting, the tool... You're just gonna put your little guy in the center. You're gonna stick your tool on top. Can you guys see that? So I just stuck the tool on top. Okay. And then you're going, I'm gonna push it to the side here. And then you're gonna push down on it. And that's it, it's done. Hello. Genius! <laughs> Love that. It's a whole lot easier than um, the whatchamacallits, you know, setting the navettes. Not that setting the navettes are hard, um, but this, man, you can do quite a few in, in a long time, in a short amount of time. So, all right, so these are the stone setters. If you guys are interested, we have them. We have them in four different sizes uh, 39SS, which is 8 millimeter. 29 SS, six millimeter. I know, wow, right? <laughs> wow. And then um, the 12 millimeter Rivoli and 12 millimeter square, the orange one does. And then this one does the 14 millimeter Rivoli. So they are really worthwhile if you're planning to do this. So, and if you're unsure about yourself about setting stones in. All right, so. We are going to now stitch these down. So I kind of had this one stitched. I was going to stitch it right down there in the middle. 
Hello, bonjour. <laughs> um, does it set only that one shape? So um, what it looks like is that if you have, um, if you have this one here, it will set a 12 millimeter Rivoli or the 12 millimeter square. So I'm pretty sure it will set the square size for each. So. <laughs> Actually, this is the first time I broke open this box of tools. So I have never used this setter before. Um. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Yeah, no, I haven't used these before yet. So I'm typically, you know, I typically, uh, I'm, I'm a go-to girl with my pliers and, and I can set things with pliers. That's what we had before these tools. So I didn't really use them. Um, but I was like, okay, you know, everybody's talking about them. So I'm like, well, let's give it a shot. So that's what I did is I gave it a shot and they actually work really, really good. I, I will have to get approval for that. And this is the person that, um, you know, I use as least tools as possible, I would say. So, um, I mean, like, you know, 1G without waxing the thread. I'm that type of person. So, and I have a, and my mom has a bead store, so I should be pushing some of this stuff. <laughs> so, all right. So, we're going to go back and we're going to stitch these down. I'm going to use 1G, and I use a 1G that's kind of like going to disappear into it, which um, for me will be right now the kind of like the silver gray. Um, light blue would work. I can use my blue. I think. Let me let me flip this over and see what I used before. I did use blue before, so. Um, so, but I'm gonna use the light gray now. And it'll be good because that way we can see the progression in how we did this. And I don't have a scissor, so um, let me go grab one because otherwise I'm gonna have to chew this off with my teeth. If I chew this off with my teeth, then I'm gonna have spit all over my thread and everything, and then that's, that's not a good thing. <laughs> so, like I was saying before, I actually did this, did give this a little bit more thought than um, than just throwing it on the mats and saying, "Yeah, I'm cool with it." So, um, you know, it does take a little bit more thought sometimes. Hi, Connie. All right. So, again, we're going to go do the quilter's knot. So, needle pointing one direction, needle point to the right, the thread point to the left, and we're going to wrap the thread around the needle a couple of times. Grab that coil, bring it down to the edge, end of the thread, create a little knot ball there, and you cut it off. Cut off that end of the thread there. So I'm going to stitch this guy down here at the bottom here. So the great thing about this, these guys, is they have holes in them. So um, great to take advantage of. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up right next to the oop. This is like, where's Waldo? Let's try and find the hole here. All right, right next to the, where the setting hole is. Hi, everybody. You guys are saying hi to each other. So, and we're gonna go through both of the holes of the setting straight across. Gonna make sure we are where we want to be with this guy. Make sure we're happy with where he's sitting. And then you're just gonna stitch back down into this this stuff. All 
All right, and we're gonna do the same thing over here on the bottom one. Come up right next to the hole in the setting. Can you guys see those holes right there? That's what I'm going for. And I'm gonna go through both the holes just like that. So we can mark them too. Um, mark down where we want to put these. Uh, I'm gonna stitch them down right away, so I'm not gonna worry about that. But if you guys are in a design process, a planning process, you can mark them down. Just like put a little mark of where you want to leave them at. All right, cool. So that first one stitched down. It only takes about, you know, you don't have to go through the holes like once or twice, it'll be stitched down. You can put a little bit of dab of glue if it makes you feel better and happy and nice. Um, I typically do not. Um, stitching it down is just fine enough for me. So I'm gonna figure out where I wanna set these other two and we're gonna set them out equally. So. Make sure we have enough distance to stick these guys in there. I kind of think I want them like sandwiched close together. I don't really want a gap in between them too much. So, kind of like the way that's looking. So because of that, let's see. Let's see how this is gonna work. We are pretty fortunate because I think our, let me grab this, take these off and just leave one. Yep, it looks that way. It looks like our bottom hole from this guy is gonna match with the top hole of this guy. So we can go straight through then, which is pretty darn awesome. I kind of like that, makes it easy. It won't always turn out like that. So don't think that you guys are like, oh, hey, <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> it won't always turn out like that. It's going to be, it'll be a challenge sometimes to try to figure it out. But trust me, you guys will get it. You guys are smart. Smart and creative. So we can, we can get this. Straight through there. I'm just gonna string this guy on. See how that lines up like that? It's gonna line up just perfectly. Like I said, doesn't always happen that way. does not pull this off. So I'm gonna make sure it's setting flush against that other stone. And I'm just gonna go straight down into the stiff stuff. If you guys have any bead embroidery questions or anything like that, you know, while I'm doing this, feel free to ask me. I can I can multitask that way. And I enjoy talking with a purpose, not without a purpose. So if <laughs> you guys give me something to talk about, that's great. <laughs> so I just went up against this other hole here. It's on the side here. And I go go through the setting. I have to angle it a little bit to get it to work. No worries. 
So once you get it down to the point that you want it and it's flush against where you want it, you're gonna stitch it down. And you're like, but there's still that little gap there. That's okay, we can fill up that gap. But that's also why we colored the background too. So that helps too. So now I'm gonna come up through the hole on this side here. Are there any no-nos in bead embroidery? Um, all depends on how strict you are about it. I mean, there's some people that, you know, they, there's some things that they will not use. So um, I, I think it's all fair game. Bead embroidery, I think is probably the most expressive thing when it comes to, you know, working with the beads and stuff like that, other than free form. Um, so, I think that it's all fine. The one thing that I say would be a no-no is, you know, to try to um, cover up as much as you can in the background, especially when you're using stiff stuff. So, I um, mean, if you leave like exposed space or something like that, like stuff that you can see through, again, the white is going to always bring you towards, um, it's always going to jump in your face. So that's why I try to um, cover as much as I can of that working space. So. Um, if any of you guys saw my other one, the uh, Midnight Garden uh, with the Luna cabs on there, I mean, you can hardly see nothing of it. I, by the way, I lost that piece. <laughs> so for those of you that did not know, I dropped in the parking lot and somebody out there is wearing it and is very happy with it. But, and I'm, you know, my mom is pretty pissed off about it, but <laughs> I have to make another one. <laughs> it was hers. I was going to use it for, you know, it was a class example, of course, so, you know, and I really don't have that much time to make a, a, other things. I do now because of the job situation, but I have a job. It's just we're all working from home. I don't travel as much, so. So, I guess that would be the biggest no-no, Sharon, is leaving space that you can see um, that there is, you know, obviously there's supposed to be a bead there and it's not there right now. So I'm just stitching this guy down. And then we're gonna stitch the other navettes down. Hey, Regina. So like I said, those little gaps there, uh, you guys can see them just a little bit, but they're right there and right there. I could see them, it's gonna bother me, so I'm gonna stick in some beads there towards the end to cover that up because otherwise I'm just gonna go berserk. Um, I do not like to see the white space. So I'm um, now going to stitch down the other navettes that I have here, and we're going to gather them up, up pretty closely there. <laughs> Regina can probably answer more of these questions than I can. She does more bead embroidery than I do. <laughs> she does more beading than I do. <laughs>
So you guys can see, just going through the holes, stitching them down. Nothing crazy. Looking good, Stephanie. Awesome, thank you. I kinda like the way it looks too. I think it's gonna really be really pretty. It's gonna be like the oceany feel, but like, hey, princess, shiny. <laughs> no, not lately. Oh, come on, Regina. Quarantine. Bead. <laughs> You've probably been busy, I know. We've all been a little busy. A little busy here. Sharon. <laughs> Thank you. It is coming. It will be pretty when we finish it off. It will be pretty. And then everybody's like, hey, you going to sell kits for that? <laughs> Lynn has already picked up her, her cabochon, so she's going to make it. Right, Lynn? There's Lynn's cabochon. She said it before I even said a price. Does that mean like I get to name my price, Lynn? <laughs> I forgot to tell you that Cabochon is going to be like a million dollars. I know, I stole your line. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mom made that. <laughs> oh, wait, any more? I was on my phone. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, wait, a beating war? How about bidding war? <laughs> I, we got to pay rent here, so <laughs> can we have a bidding war? <laughs> I do have, I have, in the, the colorways, I have this oval one, too. Um, but mom can make another one um, of the uh, of the pear-shaped. So if you guys want to copy what I have, that's fine. I don't care. You know, I have no design rights. <laughs> yep, she made it. <laughs> here we go. Here's some more for you guys. Ta-da! It's like cross and pie. There we go. I really like these colors here. Those are not my colors, but I think they're very pretty. Um, yeah, we've been busy. <laughs> or trying to be. You know, it's like we're stuck here. So um, here's some more. So this, I had her made to match some kind of uh, the... Um, I want one too, please. Absolutely. It matches the, um, gosh, the Sutosh. I have Sutosh that are in that color. So, um, but yeah, so this is, these are fun. Uh, they're, they're really um, metallic-y colors, um, but so, but without being like overly crazy. So, and they all come out with their own little different design. I want them all. <laughs> Jimmy, you probably do something with all of them too. <laughs> You guys can get some, sure, absolutely. We're gonna be um, listing some of them soon. So I'm just stitching this last one down. I also want the orange one you just showed. Okay, sure. Too hard to choose, you have to go see in person. I know, yeah, I know, right? With the blue. The orange with the blue, orange with the blue. This one, like Florida Gator colors, Lynn? I did not know you were a Gator fan. <laughs> I thought you were like U of M or something like that. If I drive up to the shop, will you drop them? Uh, will, you <laughs> will you hold them up to the door? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Sure, I can hold them up to the door.
Now, what are what you are you a Florida fan or are you like a are you just what a U of M fan or are you just like orange and blue? What? Oh, you've been practicing your bead embroidery? Awesome. You don't need to practice, Jimmy. You're like a pro at it. <laughs> I just stuck myself. You did not hear me scream, though, which is great. So I just probably took a probably a very inexpensive piece and I just made it really expensive with adding these crystals to it. But hey, we're going to enjoy it. Has she made matching set large focals and several matching smaller ones? She can do that. Yes, she has. She can make them with the same colors, so. So like that would be a matching set. And then this one. My hands are small, sorry guys, I'm running out of space. You're scared of it. You can't be scared. You made so many pretty things. <laughs> Just dropped them on the table right next to me. Oops, sorry. Okay, so there we go. We got our crystal stitched down now. So, um, so now we got that going. So now I'm going to add the um, cup chain around the edge. Starting from where the crystal ends, the Nevette crystal, and just going around. Um, so what we can do is you can actually, you can cut a piece. Um, this is probably a part of how do you buy? Um, just contact us. Um, you can email us at bijou at att.net or give us a call at 706-658-0007. I'm actually going to be listing some of these on um, Etsy. So, um, you know, cause we're going to get together like certain colorways. Like I think this colorway really matches, it really does well. Um, let me grab another one so that way you guys can see it better. Um, but yeah, so that colorway, it's like, you know, oceanese and stuff like that. So I think that one does really well. Um, and there's certain other colorways that go well together. So, um, but here's one like that we made into a, um, a piece. So she stitched that one together. Um, but it has like the peachy kind of uh, skin color, color cones to it, yeah, tones to it. Then you get that same white that is in this blue one right there. And then like a gold color. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yep, we do have an Etsy store. Um, it is, uh, can you get... Can I get the red and silver set? Yes, I can set that aside for you, um, Sharon. Um, Etsy store, yeah, we have an Etsy store. It's um, Bijou Bead Store on Etsy, and I'll post a link to it um, on the bottom of this um, uh, class thing that we're doing. <laughs> you might be able to actually find a link to it because um, we post several things on um, the Beach uh, Facebook page. So you're gonna to wanna to decide like how much space you want in between each of the cups um, to happen here with your, um, when you use cup chain. So I'm just kinda of like setting it up, seeing how I like it, seeing how much space I want there, making sure um, it's good cause it will make that curve like you need to um, cup chain. So um, the closer the cups are together, the easier it will be to make that curve. So, and I'm going to chop it off like a little bit close to that space there. Um, and then you can use glue if you want, or you can um, actually like um, stitch it all the way down 
I, I like to cheat. I like to do a little bit of both, <laughs> a little bit of glue and a little bit of not glue. So. I'm coming back, I promise. I gotta get some covers. It's like those little tools that you forget that you have to use in between so you don't have them with you. So I had to go grab one, so. Bye, Bonnie. See ya. So this is just regular cup chain, by the way. So as you guys can tell, um, it is a two millimeter cup chain. Uh, I believe it, the size would be like a six SS. And I'm going to use a dab of glue, a little bit of, um, you know, just for one from a fine tip. This is um, kind of like E6000, but it's got the fine tip applicator to it. The glue will hold it in place um, until you can get through to stitch it down and I'm not putting that much glue down. So we don't want crazy goopy amounts because we don't want a goopiest coming through. So. I do this in uh, with Sutosh too. I glue it down when it comes to the, uh, to the uh, cup chain. The reason is, is it makes it easier to um, work with. You can see I don't have a lot of space in between the cups, like I'm not pulling it really far uh, back. I feel like I have to strangle this glue to get it out. You want the blue set? I can get you the blue set, Connie. I think I'm gonna have to chop it off a little bit more. Hmm. What kind of glue was that? So um, this is actually, it's called F6000. Um, it's basically E6000 with a fine tip applicator. So F6000 is something that's available out in Italy and for some reason it's hard to find out here. <laughs> so we get it in every once in a while. Um, We'll probably order some more after all this is said and done, but you know, delays with shipping are incredible right now. So, but you can use E6000 with a, um, a toothpick basically as well.
All right, so now that I have it glued down, now I'm just gonna go um, every once in a while and stitch it across. And what we're going to, how we're gonna stitch it, so you can see I'm starting from over here in the back. So I am using the silver thread now, not the blue. And we're gonna start off with the first, kind of like where the cup chain is, the first bridge. And you can see it still want to, still is going to want to come up even though I have it glued down. And we're just going to cross over that bridge. So you always want to make sure that you're going to get it at where the points are the weakest. So the points would be the weakest is at, you know, of course at the end right there. So, um, so my thread, that's why I picked the silver thread. Um, it's going to cross over on top of it. I don't think I have that glue. E6000. Um, you can get it. We have some. We have the E6000 right now, not the F. And so it just snaps in. The thread just snaps in and it goes in between the cups there. So you don't even see it at all, but it's stitched into the back now. So now I'm just going to go up a couple of these cups here. Just kind of travel up the length of this. Um, so I'm coming up right there. So I started right there, and now I went up a couple more. Again, bridge it over the top. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, glue right now. It's, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's a little bit tougher to get. Just stitch that one down. We'll order some more of it once this is all said and done. And I know shipping is going to resume as normally as it is, but right now it's like we're getting beat out by the people that are ordering toilet paper from online. I'm not gonna say any names on here. Lynn, how is Stephanie doing with her hand? I know those are one of the things that, that hurts about a big dog is they will rip you apart and not even think like they're doing anything wrong. I think Connor has broken a few of my bones, but I just haven't been to an orthopedist yet to, to, to confirm it. <laughs> Hey, mine were baby toilet papers. Yes, they were. <laughs> How would the Loctite glue work for this? Not good. Um, so Loctite is almost like a like a super glue. You want a glue that's a little bit more flexible, but gives you a little bit more time before it dries up, and you know. And then it comes hard and brittle. And we try not to work with hard and brittle. It doesn't work very well. Um, you know what might work well though? Um, is if any of you like glue some stones to like some fabric, this gem tack probably would work well. Cause I'm guarantee it probably won't make it very um, stiff. So I'm at the point here where I'm at the point, I'm going to stitch it down um, a little bit more than I was with the longer sections. So, okay, because, you know, like the, um, like the ends, the, um, the turn here, the corner here, it, that's where it's going to get most of the pull. 
So we're gonna make sure that we stitch those areas down really nicely. Let's see, she'll go to the orthopedic doctor tomorrow that she knows in sports. Oh, cool, okay, good. Yeah, uh, that, pretty, that probably hurt. It looked like it hurt. But Connor is big guys, like, so when this is all over with and we can bring him back in so that way you guys can all see him. He's a big boy. He's got to be like 70 pounds now. Beautiful. His coat's beautiful and everything. And he's friendly. <laughs> big lap dog. But he's a big boy. He grew fast. So while I'm talking, I am stitching, guys. I'm just stitching down this cup chain. And I'm trying to figure out, there we go. To come out of a place that I can get out of. Stay at home orders and now until May 9th for us or for your daughter. So I'm getting close to the end here, guys. So remember, we're going to stitch it down um, a little bit more towards the end as well. But you see how quickly it's stitched down um, when we actually use a little bit of glue? <laughs> Happens quick. You don't have to stitch down in between every cup. Oh, Pittsburgh. Yep, Connor. Trust me, he'll love to see you too. He loves peoples. He's a big love bug. So, see guys, it's not, it doesn't take very long to do this kind of stuff. So, I've talked for a long time before I actually stitched anything down. I taught you guys how to um, set in stones in the settings and stuff like that. And I just finished with the cup chain around and I've been on here for like an hour. So, so we can get a lot done in a little bit of time. So what do you think? Ready? Ta-da-da, ta-da. -da, ta -da. So, all right, let's see where we go from here. Um, what did we want to do? I think I'm going to, I really want to work with this somehow. I don't know what I want to do with it quite yet though. So. I'm gonna hang out with that. But I think I'm going to wanna add perhaps some, bring in some of the darker blue again. No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> you guys like how I do that? Nah, nah, not feeling it. Cause now I got these turquoises at the bottom. Love the colors, thank you. Gorgeous. <laughs> Um, so now I got these turquoise colors at the bottom, so I just want to kind of, I guess, highlight more of the turquoise at this point. So let's see what we got going on here. I got some of these, which would be pretty with that. Um, and I got some of these, which would all be pretty. But I want to add some turquoise in between. So should we do some little turquoise ones? Or how about some, ooh, how about some like these turquoise demis? That'd be pretty. All right. I think that's the plan. So I'm gonna add a row around here with um, some of these guys here. 
and I'm gonna put a turquoise demi in between each of them. And we're just gonna stitch it down. So we're gonna back stitch it down. Okay. I'm gonna have a piece of dark chocolate. <laughs> Quite literally. Let's see what the saying says. So our Dove dark, dark chocolate has a saying on the inside. I know the camera's upside down, so. Um, it says, everyone has a happy ending. If you're not happy, it's not the end. Guess what, guys? If you're not happy, it's not the end, which means if we're in quarantine, it's not the end. We'll get out. <laughs> Most satisfying thing ever. Dark chocolate and cutting strands of beads. All right, so that and some of these. How cute these are. I love Demi's. They are so darn cute. I don't know if the 11 size is gonna work, so I might have to go up to an eight, but we're gonna give it a shot. So I'm gonna come up next to the um, stone in the setting here. See it coming up right next to it. Share, <laughs> share the dark chocolate. I know, I wish I could. If I could send you some, I would. I'm gonna see how this looks before I have a commitment to it. Yeah, I think, I think that size will work. I think so. So I'm gonna use the bigger bead and I'm gonna stitch down, I'm gonna back stitch down the bigger bead and have the little bead, the demi in between, floating in between. So I grabbed a demi and I grabbed a um, four millimeter fire polish. I'm just gonna stitch down right at the end of that four millimeter fire polish, right where it sits at the end. We're gonna pull that through now. There we go. And then I'm gonna come back up. So again, this is just a regular back stitch, just kind of like what we did to start off the bead embroidery, the um, Delicas around the cab. So I'm gonna come back up in between the um, Demi and the fire polished here. And I'm gonna go back through the fire polished, just the fire polish itself. Bring that close together. And it'll sit like that, like so. All right, so now I'm gonna pick up another Demi and another Fire Polished. String those down. So again, my Demi is gonna be floating. He's not, he's not really gonna be stitched down. He's just gonna float. And I'm gonna stitch that down there. Come back up in between the demi and the fire polished and travel back through the fire polished. And there we go. So we're just gonna continue that process away around the cab, away around the cab. I just took my needle right off. I've been having that issue a lot lately. So if you guys have time to join us later on the week, Thursday we will be teaching netting stitch. No, herringbone stitch. I apologize, I already taught netting.
these fire polished are really pretty. They have a pretty little shine to them. So are you guys working on a bead embroidery piece? No. <laughs> at all? While you guys are watching? Or any jewelry at all? Anything? Did any of you finish the flower? Oh, cool. Bead embroidery. Awesome. Good job, Cheryl. I like using big beads. It works fast. I'm working on, but not on bead embroidery. Oh, you finished your flower? Awesome, Robin. How do you like it? It's quite solid, isn't it? <laughs> That's what everybody tells me all the time when they actually finish it. They're like, oh my God, it's like, it really is dense. So if anybody wants these um, smart here, these guys here, I uh, will list them on Etsy. Awesome. I'm glad you love it. So it's fun to use different shaped beads and textures and different things and bead embroidery, I think at least. Thinking of putting some leaves behind it and wear as a brooch on jacket. Oh, that's a cool idea. I like that idea. I'm 
not sure I'm liking this tippy top, but we're going to see how it works out. I'm going to want to get it caught around there again. You going to make your leaves for it? Or are you going to like use some like, um, some of those check leaves, the check beaded leaves, the glass bead leaves. Woo, hair and nails done by the 24th, what up? Lynn, did you hear that? You can get your hair and nails done by the 24th. You must be dying with your nails because you're, Lynn's like, she like always has her nails done. I never have my nails done as you can tell. Like they always look like this. I also work in food processing plants for the most part, so, you know, typically not a place where, you know, you're showing off your latest, greatest manicure. Just lost my beads. Governor just announced that the reopening of some businesses with restrictions. Okay. Beaded leaves. Cool. Awesome, Robin. Bead your own leaves for that. That is cool. I like that idea. They are torn and bleeding. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you need to get them done then. You can also go to the gym if you feel the need. <laughs> ah. You know how they were having some of those like home workouts and stuff like that? I was telling myself I should really join that and should really should do that. I just couldn't get myself motivated to do so. I spent the whole month of April being lazy. Shelter in place. Will expire midnight, 4.30. Hey. Maybe they'll let me back in the plants again. You know, I like a change. Hey, you know what? Change your way. You know, I don't, I don't care. People ask me all the time, do you mind if I did this to your... Nope, do, do whatever you want. I made it. It's a suggestion if you like it or not. <laughs> if you don't like it, you want to change it to something else, go for it. I need to add more thread, guys. As you can see, my thread is like really short right now. So that's what I'm going to do. I bet they're telling people with compromised immune systems to stay at home. Oh, they probably are. I'll tell you, it's probably as they're letting out more people. Um, she, uh, she's in Georgia. 
Georgia, Georgia. As I probably, as I let out people more, um, I think that's probably when I will probably partake in wearing a mask. Right now I'm not really doing so. We are moving right along with this bead embroidery doohickey that I'm doing. It's going to be a pendant and it won't be a doohickey. Um, when it gets done. I look forward to when they let us out too, so that way we can finally have, you know, a get together here. Hey, Betty. Look, Betty, I'm doing some beating burger. <laughs> She's like, what the heck is Stephanie doing? We are just stitching down some fire polished. Back stitching it. Party, that's right. Party, party. We're gonna have party here, guys. We're gonna bring some Corona beer too. You guys don't have to drink it. I probably will. <laughs> Just to celebrate. We are almost to the end. You'll bring the limes? Awesome. <laughs> you know, we like to party here anyways, so. Look at that. That's going to end perfectly, guys. 
I was kind of worried about that. I wasn't going to say anything while I was on here. <laughs> I was kind of worried that I was not going to match up at the end. That's because cab is like, it's pretty darn good, so. Thank you, it is nice. It's so pretty. Whoop, just made you guys dizzy again. All right, so there we go. That's what it's looking like so far. So kind of like that edge on the side there. Um, let's see about filling in some of this area right now. Let's see what seed beads we got going on here. So I'm um, obviously I'm gonna want to put a seed bead here. See where these crystals meet right here. I'm poking it with the needle down here. Um, so I'm gonna want to stick something in there. Um, I want to put something on the bottom there, and I'm not sure. I grabbed some stuff here. Let's see what we got going on here. So do I want to fill it in with Rizos or let's see. I might put one of those down. I think that might be pretty. Because I kind of want to round it off. So at the bottom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am not a pro at this, so, and I don't pretend to be, trust me. There are many more people that are much more better at this than I am. <laughs> but I will teach you what I know. Just for kicks and giggles, let's see what this looks like. Stick that down there. Another crystal. Hmm. It's an option. It's an idea. Maybe I want like three. Let's see. Ah! I flicked it up on there. Too soon? Too soon for what? I'm sorry, I missed something. I was here designing. Kind of pretty. I don't know. Let me go find some seed beads that'll work with it though. That I do need to do. So that is an option.
opening. Okay. Look at that color. That's pretty. So, um, I know we typically frown upon these things for bead weaving, but these are Czech seed beads. Um, this is like a hank. It comes in a hank. Um, but these are cut. So they got a little bit of shimmer and shine to them. So that is something that could work with it. So if you guys got Czech seed beads at home, you don't know what to do with them, they're great for bead embroidery. Because you really don't need that precision, precision piece to it, so. Um, grab some 15s to work with. I think I'm not gonna go with, that's too light of blue, too sea foamy green. So I kinda wanna taper this down out, like here, all right? I wanna kinda bring it out from this point on, from the second, um, from the second, uh, third fire polished up, taper it down to here, um, just to kind of round off the edge the, and then round it off down here. So, so we're gonna start by doing that. So I'm gonna kind of make my border, I guess you would say it. Tired of sitting at home all the time, I know. I know you guys are. So I think I'm gonna be using another color demi, kind of like a silvery grayish, some of these um, seed beads, hybrid milky island paradise. I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna stitch out a line from here to here, to the edge of the, um, to the edge of the crystal. And how I'm doing that is just a regular back stitch. You could actually line it out if you wanted to with like, you know, some marker or something like that. But I'm just gonna go with some mad skills that I think I might have and that I can be able to do this in a straight line.
Yeah, I think we all miss our friends, Connie. But I think we all have a greater appreciation now for our family members and stuff like that since we spent so much time with them. <laughs> so if you didn't kill them, you love them. All right, cool. Bye, George. I think we got it. All right, so there's that line that I stitched there. So then I'm just gonna fill that in with some beads on the side. Kind of like some turquoise beads and stuff like that. Um, perhaps some of these crystals here. See these here? So. In fact, let's try to do that now. So that way you guys can see that. I gotta keep pay attention to time. I gotta pick up my car from the shop <laughs> before they don't give me my car back. I'm gonna kind of pick up these beads like really no rhyme or reason just to try to stitch them in there and I haven't really used any 11s yet I am using, I mean um, any 15s yet I'm using really 11 odemis and stuff like that just for that half space in there but I might have to use a 15 here in the corner Might be able to fit a demi in there. What 15s did I use? Um, is it too soon in your opinion for us to be opening? Um, certain things, yes. So I don't think we should be um, allowing people to get into large groups. So, um, you know, I don't think people should be flocking to churches or anything like that, although a lot of people are going to want to do that because a lot of their friends are in the churches. 
But we got to realize that the reason that this kind of worked out and we don't have a higher death rate than what we do is because um, they attempted it with social distancing. Small white pearls work too, yes. So, um, so yeah, so we got to be careful on where we, uh, how many people get together. And it's just because we don't, you know, the whole thing about it was, was to not overload the hospital system. It was to get people to, you know, if they needed the help, they needed to go to the hospital, that they would have access to it and we wouldn't burden the hospital system. So that way they can get the care that they needed to get well. That was the whole point across it. So I think um, letting people go out and socialize is one thing, but um, letting them get together in large groups is a totally another aspect of it. I don't think they're quite, we're quite ready for it. I don't think we, um, I don't think we as a population are quite ready for it, you know, as much as the virus is probably not ready for us to do that either. So I think we have um, frightened ourselves enough that we're kind of worried about it. So for as much as some people would want to go out and venture out and see their friends, I think they all kind of have like a, um, you know, there's something in the back of their mind, the fear about it, so. I'm trying to be as politically correct about it as I can. Considering what I know. Hmm. I don't think that guy wants to fit in there. So you guys can tell that I'm just trying to go with what is going to fit in that space. And I'm just kind of filling in with light colors. And Barbara's right, you can do some small white pearls in these spaces too. And it's just, all I'm doing is a simple back stitch. Yeah, like, I kind of have to be politically correct about it. So there we go. We just filled in that space with some beads there. So I put in some crystals and some seed beads um, just to cut out that corner there. So now, of course, because I'm super symmetrical, whatever I did to one side, I have to do the other. Not exactly like the same bead pattern on the inside, but at least I have to cut into that little space there. So, thanks, Brenda. You like it? So, down here, what are we going to do down here? I feel like I like this shape. Kind of want to go with it. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Erdy? What's Erdy? Oh, Purdy. <laughs> I was like, what's an Erty? <laughs> All right, so down here. I think I will probably add these. Smush them into the corners here. That will hide some of that corner there. There. Have the seed beads come out from the middle there. And come back around. Okay. That's an idea. We'll give it a shot. Right, guys? Oh, Yvette, you almost got your, you almost got all your stuff. At least you got part of it. <laughs> Hopefully the rest of it will come like tomorrow. So that way you can do the flower. Were the beads um, from, that you won, were they in that order or were they in the, uh, the other one? So I am stitching down these. These are um, crystal sequins. They're Savorsky crystal sequins. They are spectacular. Great for bead embroidery. Fantastic. They're good for filling in those little spaces that you don't know what to do with. Um, and then they're super shiny, so that helps for those of us that like the shine. Flip this guy over. There we go. Oh, they're coming in. They must be in with that other package, though. That's coming. It's on its way. They're just the mail carriers taking a long time. <laughs> Some people's packages went all the way down to Florida, then they went all the way back up to New York. So <laughs> not sure what they're doing right now. So there's those crystals that I added in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to frame around these on either side. Oops, off of the camera screen. And I'm gonna use My dummies here. So I just added some demis in between here, in between the two crystals.
Like I said, Demi's are great because um, they are a size 11, but they're cut in half. So you get the height from an 11. Yeah, that is kind of weird. I think yours is probably part of the ones that, you know, they went down to Florida first and then don't know why. I'm pretty sure it's on its way. I will track it though, if you'd like. Try to find out where it is. So I'm using these two colors of Demi's. One is kind of like a um, crystal-y multicolored. Kind of like a gray lined. And the other one's a turquoise. So I put that gray line crystal color because I want to try to take some of that away from the uh, that sequin that's in there. Because the sequin is a crystal AB, and oftentimes it'll look more pink. All right, so now I'm going to follow that crystal sequence on the other side of here. i got to bend that over into light so that way you guys can see it. So what I'm going to do is I use this turquoise one to kind of like as the go in between to like show the point of where I'm starting off at. Ended up using six on the other side, so I'll probably use about the same amount on this side. Oh, awesome. Okay, cool. I hope so. Yeah, I think a couple of other people were expecting theirs today as well, so. Unfortunately, we sent them out in enough time that they should have been there, but I think uh, the Postal Service is a little bit overwhelmed with everybody doing their online shopping. All right, so there we go, guys. There's the bottom there. So I got kind of like a little loop thing going down here. Um, got this side coming out like that. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. So it's got kind of like a pretty loop-de-loop -loop pattern at the bottom. So um, like a scalloped edge. And I think I kind of like that. So I think I'm going to kind of go with the scalloped edge with this kind of side coming out, um, as you can see. So. Um, and I'm going to have to cut it short for today because, like I said, my car is in <laughs> was repaired today. So I have to go pick it up before it goes into car jail. Um, and uh, so next week, what we'll work on is we're going to cut it out and we're going to back, back it. So I think I'm done with the way I'm happy with the way it looks. 
I'm gonna repeat the pattern that I have from this side over here, on here and here, on these two sides. And I'm gonna cut it. Uh, so next week we're gonna cut it and we're going to back it. So back it with some leather. And the leather I'm gonna back it with is this pretty little shiny thing here. Cool? All right. So um, if anybody does, if you guys don't have any questions like that, I will see you guys on um, Thursday. For, I told you guys it was a disaster area around here. Look at this. So, I will see you guys on Thursday for um, the, uh, what are we teaching? Herringbone. For the herringbone stitch class, okay? All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Um, and I will see you guys um, soon. Have a great day. Bye. Hugs.